but he would jest. I said circles around Manhattan, but he would basically just get part of his crew and say, I'm going to do a swim around Manhattan this week. And he's done it about 10 times. And he just loved to swim around Manhattan because he couldn't get over to England. Uh, Tom also is an author. He wrote the, the book, Conquest of the English Channel. Um, he's a mentor, teacher to many swimmers who have attempted the English Channel, who needed a coach, a trainer. And there was one young fella, fella by the name of Doc Councilman, which we all know, and he sought out and had Tommy as his coach and teacher in helping him become the oldest man to swim in the English Channel. So it's people like Tom who was responsible for, finding, for being one of the co-founders of the Manhattan Island Marathon Swim. He was the individual that came to me and my family and said, I know you're going through a tough time, it's been three months, uh, I'm doing a swim around Manhattan in July and I want you on my boat. So he was sort of planting the seed and getting me involved indirectly and he worked on me, that was in 1981 of July, and that whole winter he sort of back and forth with phone conversations and finally I broke down and said, here's what we'll do. I said, you're going to be the president. I said, I'll help you out in the background. But Tommy was down in Texas, but that's how it started. And I said, I want to do a memorial swim in honor of my son who passed away and do it on an annual basis and have an event. So that's what brought us to this point. The second thing I said is I want to structure the organization so that we have something similar to the English Channel Swimming Federation and he helped us with that also. And then we said we're going to do a kickoff swim. Um, I would like you, it was the tortoise and the hare, because Tom is a slow swimmer but he can swim forever. And he was to go out two and a half hours at an earlier tide and I was supposed to catch the back end of the tide two and a half hours later and try to catch him. We started at 36th Street, uh, 96th Street on the, uh, the um, right where the Harlem and the East River merge. And Tommy went off and I had to wait two and a half hours. The idea was to swim down up the Harlem River, down the Hudson, and I guess as I was going down past the battery, all of a sudden a swimmer jumps off the fire boathouse pier and starts cruising along with me and I sort of have an idea who it is. I have a lot of swimming buddies and they're not strange people but they like to have a lot of fun. So after swimming stroke for stroke for about two or three hundred yards we stop and I look at Jimmy McCarthy and Jimmy looks at me and Jimmy says to me, Drury, and I go, Jimmy, he says, what are you doing in my pool? <laughs> Jimmy was a New York City fireman and that was the place he swam almost every day. He just jump in and swim. Um, Tully Hetzel could not be with us, but again, he sends his love and his thoughts, and uh, I'm sure he'll be either attempting a few swims in his older years, he's in good shape, he doesn't have any health problems, and I'll be there to help him. Um, I have a few other thoughts, and I didn't mean to take this long, but let me pass them on to you. This Father's Day, I've been blessed to have four of my grandchildren here, um, and they're hiding down there somewhere, coloring or something, saying, when are you going to talk? Uh, how long is this going to take? You know how kids are. But um, 
again, uh, my daughter Sabrina is here, my uh, son Douglas, my daughter Danielle is busy with her lacrosse clinics and camps all over the country helping young children, young girls play the sport of lacrosse. She was a uh, four-time World Cup lacrosse championship and she is giving back to the sport that she loves. Um, which is what we're all trying to do. Um, I'd like to recognize a few people over the years that have been responsible for the Manhattan Island Swimming Association. And Dale Petranek, Shelley Taylor, Tommy Hetzel who's not here, Dr. John Powers, Tim Johnson who's here, if you would like to stand up or be recognized, Julie Ridge, uh, Janie Katz, my nephew Jimmy Armstrong couldn't be here. Uh, he also told me one year, he was a football player in college and he said, Uncle Drury, I'm going to do that swim. And sure enough, he trained for a year in the pool up at Fordham and he did the swim. But the problem was when he finished, the start and the finish was up around 96th Street. The voter had miscalculated a little and took him a little too far out, so he was headed out to Long Island. <laughs> so they made a quick stop on the little island there, and I get a phone call, Uncle Drury, it's Jimmy. I'm out here on the island, can you see me? He said, but I can't get in the tide pushing me out to the island. So I said, official finish, you're okay. <laughs> but Jimmy couldn't be here. If I can make one comment, it was not the border, it was his trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> oh. uh, Sue Peterson, for years we had the help of the uh, Kings Point Merchant Marine Academy, and they lent their support. And I want to mention in particular, let me see if I missed anybody. Richard Ellis also, who had the Ellis Island, <laughs> and let me mention one of the most important people of the Manhattan Island Marathon swim, and that's Morty Berger. Morty has continued to swim. We're behind him all the way, helping him support future events, and this year we also set up a non-profit organization called Swim Free and my purpose over the next 20 to 30 years, God willing, is to